Why hello again internet, uh, this is David here and we're talking about what makes our produce at Zestos, uh, which we supply to Ubi, uh, different and a cut above the rest. And so uh, I firmly believe that soil is the key. You've got to start with your soil, look after the bacteria and the biology of the soil and the rest will take care of itself to some degree. And so when we first moved here uh, we had a look at our soil and the good and the bad news is it's exceptionally sandy. So uh, the first 10 centimetres, uh, maybe up to 30 centimetres, so not that much about that kind of distance, is uh, topsoil. And in fact, some places it's nothing, but you know, there's a bit of topsoil. And then it goes straight into sand. So we've got river sand because we're close to the Waikato River and it's alluvial sand. So it's uh, pretty much a pumicey sand that you'd find on the central plateau. And so one thing that does happen is nutrients. Uh, flow very quickly out of sandy soils and sometimes if they're sandy they don't have any nutrients at all to start with because it wasn't in the sand. So uh, the initial soil test that was done which I was very pleased about was actually mandated by the council before we bought the block because our block has carved off a part of a citrus orchard and so what they mandated is it had to be tested for chemical residues so that we would know what we were buying and the great news is is that all the chemical residues that I recognize like DDT, DDE and all the rest of it were non-existent and there was a whole page that came back from Hills Labs about various chemicals which didn't make much any sense to me but obviously these were things that orchardists could put on their place and they all came back zero. So we've got no residual uh, nasty chemicals from the fact that the orchard's been here for 30 years and built up in the soil. So that's really good. And so we, what I did then was a leaf test and a soil test and some results came back and showed us some issues. And so what was very clear from the soil test is we were lacking in manganese. So this is the stuff we've put on the um, on the place. It's got a pink colour, manganese sulphate, and so uh, you need that for plants, healthy plants. And so we put a whole lot of this stuff on. Well, not a lot, about 15 kilos over time, over a couple of years. So little and often. And uh, the other thing that we put on as well, uh, because it was missing as a trace element, and it was zinc. So this is zinc. Um, Sulfide, sulfite again, sulfide I can never quite remember and you can see it's a bit sticky, it absorbs the water and so uh, we again apply this autumn and spring so that the plants can improve their nutrition. And we did see that quite clearly, I uh, don't have many before photos unfortunately, I might have a look to see if I can find one but uh, you could see the veins, the veins in the leaves were dark and the rest of it was yellow so it was showing that there were deficiencies of zinc or manganese or iron um, which we didn't think there would be, it would be manganese or zinc. So, and we were right and so the trees looked much healthier, they greened up like they should and that was fantastic. But we went a step further because we want to provide the best and I want to provide my family with the best and I want my family to be healthy and so the fruit that they eat from our place has got to be what I consider very very healthy. And so we did a bunch more testing uh, and Hills actually rang us and said you know um, this is unusual for a citrus slash horticultural operation are you sure you want to you know pay for this extra service um, because it's not elements that the trees need and we said yes absolutely we wanted to go further and one of the uh, important things we put on there, you can see that this is a tub, about a one kilo, yep, one kilo of copper, sul uh, sorry, cobalt sulphate. And so you can see it's a quite a unique colour there with a teaspoon in there for serving it out. Now cobalt's really expensive, so this jar here was, was more than the 20 kilo sacks put together of all the other stuff we bought. And the reason um, that it's really important is that nitrogen fi fixing bacteria need it and humans need it. So the lack of cobalt in the sandy soils brought about bush sickness which was something that plagued the animal, ruminant animals, the cows and the sheep on the central plateau until about the 30s when they discovered that cobalt was essential for vitamin B12 and without it the cows, uh, the ruminants, the bacteria in the stomach couldn't provide the ruminants with uh, vitamin B12 so they're dying of vitamin B12 deficiency. Um, and so A it's really important for the nitrogen fixing bacteria which we don't use any nitrogen fertilizers and so we want to maximize and enable the nitrogen fixing bacteria to work obviously. But secondly for us, you need cobalt, it's essential for you, it's essential for me, it's essential for my kids, my wife and so therefore the best way to do it instead of eating this by the, well, by the crystal grain I guess, uh, is to put it on the ground, have the bacteria turn it into bioavailable stuff and then the bacteria die and the tree can uptake it, put it in the fruit and so the fruit that you get will have cobalt in it um, whereas no other citrus supplier in their right mind would test for cobalt because plants don't need it. What else did we test for? We tested for selenium. This green stuff here is selenium. 
took me years to track down a supplier that could supply me with the small, well, the small amount I needed. I only needed one kilo of it. Um, and so most farms that apply it, so lots of farms will apply selenium because it's good for the cattle, it's good for your immune system. And so, you know, but they buy fertilizer by the ton. So, that, you know, lots and lots of selenium they need. Um, so it took us a while to find one of these. And these are chips. So these are limestone chips that have been coated with the selenianite. And uh, so to, to apply it, because I only needed such small amounts, um, actually it's only the total amount I needed for this place, I think was about five grams of actual selenium. But that's why they cut it around the chips, so you can make a small air, you can dispose, you know, sprinkle it around easier. But I calculated out I need to sprinkle a teaspoon of this stuff per row and it ain't gonna work. So, what I got is my mortal and pestle out and stole it from the kitchen, ground up these grow irons and the green stuff came off the outside and just left the white um, limestone and then put that into a spray pack and uh, sprayed that round because it's very very low concentrations. But of course it's an important nutrient for humans. And so that's why we put it on, so that we can be healthy and so you can be healthy. Now fortunately I found a better source of selenium great, uh, wonderful news is it's a waste product, it was going to waste, and this is a high-end animal supplement specifically designed for horses, um, horses that are well looked after, and so uh, it's got a range of nutrients in there, and so that's given to the horses in the drinking water, and it's specifically designed to be what's called chelated. So what I've shown you before, these powders, these are what are called chemical salts, so they're not the metal, so for instance um, zinc, so they're not, this isn't a zinc block that you would find on your cladding of your house or on the bottom of your boat where you might use zinc. Um, that would be a metal. This looks, you know, white. Doesn't look like zinc because it's chemically a salt. These stuff in here is actually bound to proteins. So they're amino acid or an amino acid chelate, which means that the plants can absorb them immediately. So not, not only have we got selenium in here, which is why I use it, it's also got manganese, interestingly enough and zinc which is great and the blue color comes from copper as well it's got a bit of copper and i think it's got a few other trace elements um, so this is available for use by the plants it doesn't have to go through the bacteria or the fungi or the plant itself putting proteins onto the um, nutrients so it can be used so it's directly usable and being a waste product it's uh, free it was donated to us so that was great and it saves something going to a landfill or wherever else it goes so lastly one more thing this is an empty bottle, and if you can read the label there, it is uh, stock iodine. And uh, I've, it's empty because I've changed suppliers. I wasn't overly happy with this, but it was the only place I could find iodine. Um, and I now have it, uh, um, uh, 20, I found a 20 litre container designed for horses, and again, horse supplements. So it's already chelated, so it can be easily absorbed. The issue is New Zealand soils are very low on iodine. And so we are at risk, very high risk, of being low on iodine ourselves because A, we don't have iodized salt that much anymore because we've cut down our salt levels, which is good because salt's in pretty much everything. But of course, this high salt diet that we have, which is from processed foods, um, that's not iodized salt because iodized salt's more expensive. And um, so we don't have much iodine intake. And so we're uh, stuck. So obviously to provide my family with iodine and provide you with iodine and myself with iodine we need to get it into the soil, we need to get it into the plants and so I was spraying with iodine, stock iodine, um, which is a disinfectant at high concentrations uh, and interestingly enough it used to be used for cleaning milking machines so they put iodine through as, as the disinfectant and so then that would leave a little residue on all the pipes the milk would go through and so milk was for a long time a very good source of iodine but now they don't use iodine based disinfectants because they're expensive so therefore our one of our major sources of iodine has been cut out of our diet so Hopefully you enjoyed this and quite understand now why we are so passionate about optimal health, we're passionate about soil, we're passionate about giving the soil all the nutrients it needs, and are passionate about giving you the nutrients you need. So, catch you next time.